Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depends on when you're listening, as we like to say. Welcome to The Solution. Nothing changes if we change nothing. Hey, Shavor. Ronnie, 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 how are you? How are you, man? I'm good. You know, it's hot and it's kind of stormy out, but I feel good inside. And, and you know, this morning, one of the things I posted about being grateful for was my inner voice of hope. I love that. I love that. The inner voice of hope is, is, is important. Having hope, having belief in certain things, a belief in life, you know, especially right. now when we're stuck at home, mm-hmm. <laughs> we, you know, we could do is stare at the storm. I wouldn't go out in the storm anyway. But I mean, the fact that, you know, we, we have to have hope to move forward, especially in the type of work that we do in prevention. You know, there has to be hope, especially when we don't know what's going on with our, our young people or people in general. You know how they're coping. What are they, what are their vices? What are they what are they doing to get through this? You mm-hmm. know, and, I, and I mentioned these things in previous podcasts where you know I, I've noticed young people, uh, and I don't want to say lose hope, where it's like they don't have the direction of positivity at the moment, or or they or they haven't pointed, or rather they haven't been pointed into the direction of positivity. I don't want to say they don't they don't have the direction. But, mm-hmm. you know, because I've seen it. I've seen the vaping. I see the the hookah. I see the the weed. I see those things. And in, in, in the fact that we don't, you know, well, we're now in phase three, going to phase four, New York City. Uh, we, the basketball courts are back up. So I'm seeing more kids on the basketball courts, which is a joy to me to see kids out there playing. You know, granted, there's no social distancing, but I don't want, I'd rather them play in basketball than smoking. <laughs> I'd rather them doing that. No. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. And, you know, it's been a hard time for people. Um, this is unlike anything we've ever experienced before. And, and I mean, I'm reading, I'm hearing about alcohol and drug use going way up. Overdoses have really gone way up. Um, it, it's become a really sad situation. Um, we're so used to that interpersonal connection. But, you know, one of the things we've been talking to our partners about is how they're creating that within a hybrid world. That's a new term mm-hmm. that I'm starting to look at as far as not the term mm-hmm. hybrid, but seeing what we're doing is hybrid because some things are going back to face to face, not too many, but eventually they will. And um, we're looking at different things like uh, on the college level, how they're going to do their counseling and things like that. Um, when we're living in a world that has two genres to it, um, you know, we're making this up as we go along, I like to say. Um, but I just want to do one little quick disclaimer. For those of you watching, sometimes you'll see me turn around. I'm watching my dog, Lucy, who's my coworker. And every once in a while, I got to turn around because she's being, I don't want to say a bad dog. I don't like the word bad, but she's being challenging. So forgive me if I turn around. I love the but word. But anyway, getting back to what we are saying. Oh, this is. What's that? No, I was gonna say I love that word. Like I used to when I used to run my after school program, I would never say a child was having a bad day. I would say they were having a difficult day. Right. Like it's just the connection, the the, the choice of words. Words are so so important. You know, mm-hmm. and, and and my young people were more inclined to talk to me because I'm like, nah, you're just having a difficult moment. Like, how do we get through this difficult moment? How do we make this moment better than it was before? You know, and I had and, teachers. Yeah. I had teachers come to me and say, "Can I use that?" I'm like, "I don't have a copyright on that. You can use that." But we exactly. I think we have some guests. We do, but I think we have a, um, one more coming. So no, no, okay. I was going to just take a moment and um, wait for that last one to come in. That's yeah, we problem. have some special guests today. I'm excited. Uh, we're special guests. Some, something that uh, we've talked about, but we haven't really been able to delve into it um but I'll, I'll see who's there and i love your you know what you say about language language is so important um sometimes we forget we actually covered that in one of our posts like it's a good time to be meaningful with, with your words it's like i'm i'm big on words we actually had a, a training the other day we talked about words and how the use of language and, and depending on the individual who are, who's using language and who's allowed to use the language based on their circumstance mm-hmm. You know, it's really important. I'm sorry, that. Well, we also don't want to create stigma when we use language. Yeah, and yeah. I like what you said about a difficult moment. Um, you know, I'm in long-term recovery. When I was in early recovery, a lot of times I'd have a difficult moment and think I was having a bad day. Mm-hmm. And I had to learn to do an inventory at the end of the day and realize those few moments don't define my day. Just mm-hmm. like 
those few traits don't define who I am. So um, mm-hmm. that's, those are the kind of things that sometimes we need to instill in young people and, mm-hmm. and in people, you know, older people too. We all forget, we all go there. Um, mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. that's a lot of what drives people to, to use or to mm-hmm. misuse drugs and alcohol. Um, you know, and I think we just have to keep the hope alive and just keep people feeling loved and supported. That's not to say that's going to stop them from using, but it might delay that use and it might bring them to a better path at some point. No, um, and, and I definitely agree. It's about the, sometimes it's about the delay. You know, we can't mm-hmm. stop, we can't stop every action, but we can delay, we can delay some actions. I, I know. Important and give people an opportunity to think about those actions during that delay. Oh, exactly. I, I'm telling, I'm telling our waiting room people, bring <laughs> inside in a bit no it's all it's it's okay but i think today's uh uh, podcast is going to be extremely interesting like you said um we have so we have a a group this time opposed to one person one person we have a group very exciting this is going to be interesting i'm uh, and, and, and it's it's cool because uh, a lot of the work we talk about is is with young people, and they work with varying ages of people. You know, primarily, I mean, where they are, they 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 have more interaction with young people than our other coalitions. You mm-hmm. know, based on based on their work, and I'm like giving trying to give hints without saying who they are. I know, right? <laughs> well, let's just say, for me, when I started using, it was in college, okay. and that's oh. where I had my greatest challenges. Mm. Um, because of, I don't want to, it wasn't just peer pressure, but all the stress. I'm, you know, so t- many times people forget that those are hard times during our lives when we're teenagers, mm-hmm. um, you know, through 25 and up. Um, but mm-hmm. a lot of times those adolescent years and, mm-hmm. and early 20s are so challenging. But people like to say, oh, those are the best years of your life. Well, that's not how I remember it. I remember having a lot of challenges. Um, but you know what, how about if I, I bring our guests in so people don't think that we're talking, you know, in circles here. <laughs> Let's bring them in and we'll introduce them. We'll let people get to know who we're talking about. Uh, so you're going to start seeing those little windows come up on our screen in a moment. It's starting now. I, lo- I love the pictures of people when they first come in. Um, <laughs> it's always fun. <laughs> but they're starting to come in now. Good morning, folks. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, folks. Good morning. How are you guys? Good. We, <laughs> we were just talking. We were giving hints to our audience about who you might be, but we didn't say exactly yet. We figured we'd get all of you here, and then we'd give you a proper introduction. Mm-hmm. So we're going to – I think we've got us all here. We're just waiting for Ashmini to appear on our screen. Um, but in the meantime, I guess we could tell people um, – we are so excited to have four of our five um, college prevention coordinators from four city university schools. Uh, Oasis, our funder and their funder, had given them a grant to do prevention work on the college level. And we asked them to come today because we think it's a really relevant topic and something that a lot of people are struggling with right now. So what I'd like to do is let them introduce themselves and maybe you could give a brief introduction, tell who you are and what you do. So who wants to go first? I'll go. Okay. Um, Hi, I am Jamie Rufano, and I'm the College Prevention Coordinator at the College of Staten Island. So what I do is I oversee all the prevention activities on campus through the grant. And how long have you been there, Jamie? You want to just tell people? Oh, I've been there since September 2017, so when the grant started. So it's going on three years now. Nice. Yeah. What else would you like to know? <laughs> uh, we're we're going to let you guys talk. So whatever you, you know, you decide you want to talk about, but why don't we just do some brief intros and sure. who wants to go next? Ashmini, I'll why don't next. you go next? Yeah, I'll go next. Hi, everyone. My name's Ashmini Hiralal. I work at Lehman College as the prevention coordinator. Um, I've been there for about two years and three, four months. Um, So I came in a little bit after Jamie did with the grant work, Um, and my role is to do basically the same thing, to coordinate all of our alcohol and other drug prevention on campus, and I do work um, with our student leaders in our wellness center as well to do some other health promotion and health education. So that's a little bit about what I do. Nice. Thank you. Okay, who's going to jump in there next? 
Come on. Yes, I can go. I got it. I got it. (laughs) Uh, I am Sarah Redfield and I'm the um, prevention coordinator at Baruch and I do very similar things to what everybody else does. Uh, And I am, I believe the newest to the grant. Uh, I came in on the grant January, 2020 and then COVID happened. So here we are. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, here we are. Okay. Um, I guess I'll go. Well, there's no other choice, so I'm going to go. Um, <laughs> so I'm Nishanti. I am the CPC for um, a college prevention coordinator for City College. And ditto, I do, I think everybody touched on uh, different parts of the job that, you know, um, I do as well. Okay, well, that's it in a nutshell, but obviously we're going to talk about a lot more. And one thing we like, we emphasize when we're here, it's really important to follow this rule. We have to have fun. Um, so we don't just talk about our work, we talk about whatever you want to talk about. And, and please just feel to jump in wherever you want. Um, we do have a couple of guiding questions. So when one was, you know, what have you been doing during, during quarantine? Like how have you been staying busy and keeping up the work? Uh, that's a I guess great that's question. question. Oh, you want to go? No, go ahead. Go ahead, Jamie. Okay. Um, Well, I I guess I could speak for everyone who's here um, that it's been challenging, but also um, different and kind of fun. Um, We got to do something um, that we, I've never done before, but we were planning an in-person conference with um, a presenter, Dr. Jason Kilmer, and that wasn't going to happen. So we were able to transform it into a webinar. And we did that in May. Um, We had uh, about an hour and a half conversation about marijuana use on urban campuses. So we wanted it to be specific to CUNY campuses. Um, And he did such a great job and we had a really good turnout. Um, I think over a hundred participants came uh, throughout the the city. So it wasn't just the colleges. Um, We had other prevention providers. We had other coalitions. Uh, I think the DA's office also was on our um, webinar. So um, collectively, the five of us, um, we did that. Um, And what I've been doing on campus is being more present on social media because how else are we gonna get Um, in touch with our students, um, what better way than to use our social media. So although we were on it already, um, we've just been more present, posting more, um, and using our platforms to get prevention messages across. And we've had like specific posts geared towards 420, um, prevention week, I'm preparing posts for overdose prevention week in August, uh, prevention month in August, and just preparing for the fall semester. And, you know, I think we're preparing for virtual right now. Um, so trying to see what environmental strategies we could do on our campus on virtual platforms. Also, I've been working a lot with, um, the TISA Coalition, um, that's the Staten Island Coalition, working really closely with them since the beginning. Um, but, you know, more so just like sharing their resources with our students, providing credits to our students to attend their virtual Narcan trainings, which they have a couple of months. So, um, yeah, that's that's basically what I've been doing. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, I'm working pretty hard <laughs> in quarantine. <laughs> I know, right? I don't know what you that. Can, can you no. imagine, like, we're more busy during quarantine than we were in the office? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I, I definitely keep busy. Try to keep busy, because what else am I going to do at home? <laughs> yeah, I oh, think you that's got- the hard part, is, like, working from home and finding mm-hmm. balance between, like, mm-hmm. getting work done and, like, having a life at home, because home and work are the same place now. So, How do you do that, though? Like, what are your tricks for doing that? I don't know if I have any tricks, you know, honestly, but one thing is to really keep a schedule. I think if I keep a schedule Mm -hmm. and I tell myself like from eight to five 30, that's my work hours. And Mm -hmm. then at five 30, I put my computer away and that's it work. The work day is done. And then I try to focus on some of my, you know, day to day tasks, like making dinner and folding laundry, doing stuff like that helps um, to kind of keep a balance. But it is challenging because, you know, your office is in your kitchen sometimes or it's in your living room. And so mm-hmm. really trying to keep that balance can be a very big challenge. But we're all doing it. So yay us. 
Um, <laughs> and just like Jamie, I think, you know, I've been doing the same thing, just trying to engage our students in a virtual uh, platform. So we did the, like Jamie mentioned, we did the marijuana conference, which we're really proud of just because we brought together community partners, mm -hmm. we brought together campus stakeholders, and we got really positive feedback. Um, so we're, we're really proud of that because we had to shift really last minute um, from an in-person conference to the webinar. Um, in addition, like I've been trying to do some virtual workshops um, to have our students be a part of. Uh, we did some like on just like general wellness and we did some on self-care because I think self-care is really important for people right now, especially when you're not, you don't have access mm -hmm. to your support systems. You don't have access to your friends, your family, your normal environment that you might be accustomed to studying in. So I we did some of that, um, and then like like Jamie, I'm planning for the fall to kind of figure out how we're gonna engage people virtually, um, and we're still trying to figure it out. But I think you know as we start talking about it with our coalition, um, we can figure some things out. Our coalition has been meeting, which I think is another great win because that's also challenging to get people together during this time. Yeah. So we've been having virtual meetings, um, and it's been going well so far. So. Oh, definitely. Ha and that the conference was absolutely great. Um, you know, I was happy to be able to attend and who, who knew that you could do so much virtually? I mean, it just really was effective. Yeah. You know, and it looked a lot like this, except it was one little box and a PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great. I, yeah. I, you know, it, keeping busy is important, but it is it, the little everyday things in life get in the way. Like just now I had to lean over and let a dog out because she smelled a burger heating up outside the room. Uh, <laughs> but you manage. And I think keeping that yeah. schedule for me has been so crucial. I get up at six every day, set my alarm and, um, and get to work by 730. Yeah. yeah, I think like sticking to your normal routine. I think it was easy to get off the routine in the beginning, but then just getting back into a routine of like your daily activity, just in case, you know, the world decides to go back to normal and you have to resume normalcy pretty soon. Like it's going to be really hard to get back into that if you weren't in a routine already. So yeah, definitely like waking up early and like sticking to everything I was already doing. It's just my commute is a lot shorter. It's just a little yeah that's a plus into a yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what about the other two of you what have you been doing during uh this quarantine to keep up your work um i think it's gonna be very similar as everybody <laughs> else um we're all turning to our social media to try to engage our students as much as possible um but for me, what I've been really kind of like focusing on is just making sure that I'm maintaining the partnerships that I had worked hard in the three months I was on campus to mm -hmm. kind of um, foster and create. So it's like having those coalition meetings, making sure you're you know reaching out to them, but then also utilizing them and what are they doing to engage the students and mm -hmm. how can you plug and play, like put, put in your message through their stuff and, you know, make sure that those partnerships are still strong for when, when, and if we do get back onto campus one day that it's like, you never kind of left. Um, so just making sure you're maintaining those partnerships has been really important for me. Um, and that's the partnerships with the coalition and with all of my other colleagues. Um, they've been wonderful and they're all doing great work. So just those oh, partnerships have been really important. And Sarah, would you have like two and a half months in person, if even that? Basically, I like I'm lucky I even got to meet all the other CPCs <laughs> before like we all went into quarantine. Uh, but luckily, I had some good groundwork laid for me already from the previous CPC, so I'm grateful for that. But yeah, it wasn't much time to kind of get my footing before I had to learn how to get my footing virtually, which we all had to do that. So I can't complain. Yeah, well, the work's been great. It, and Sarah used to work with us at the PRC. Um, so she's got a very strong background prevention, as do, you know, all of the people that you're seeing before you. Um, but it's just been really admirable watching all of you and very exciting. So, Nashanti, what about you? Um, I ditto, right? <laughs> um, a different approach towards the beginning of the, the isolation um, and I took a new a needs assessment approach. Um, so what we did was we sent out a survey um, to all of our students to just ascertain how the 
pandemic is affecting their frequency of use. Um, just so that we were prepped for whatever social norms campaigns needed to happen in the fall. Um, I think a lot of us suspected we'd be virtual in the fall. And so, you know, trying to tie that into a campaign that was social media oriented um, and, you know, making sure that our students still had access to the resources they needed was really important. But in order to figure out what they needed, we needed to survey them. Mm -hmm. um, so that took up a good chunk of my time, um, putting the survey together, getting it out, analyzing data took up a big chunk of my time from May to June. Um, so now really we've switched gears into creating a website, a landing page for all of our campaigns, for all of our initiatives, for the coalition itself. Um, I have a great marketing team working on that. And then hopefully that'll roll out at the same time as our social media campaigns in the fall. So um, we're trying to increase our online presence. Yeah. And, and you know, we'll, of course, we'll mention NYC pop. We do every, um, every time we do a podcast, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But it, I just also want to give a shout out to Deanna, who is not here today. I was going to say the go, same Shamar, thing. Shamar, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, Guys, got to like, let the dog back in. I do want to give a big <laughs> shout out to her. I'm actually, I went on social media this morning, our, our uh, NYC PRC page, and I think she had the baby, right? Am I, am I correct to say that? No? Okay, oh, maybe. I saw, I, saw I saw something. Uh oh, you may have just like uh, made things happen. I, I saw something, but maybe <laughs> maybe I I misread it, and, and I I, I should have just texted her. But anyway, which so she's with Chow. She is close, if not happening at this very moment. Uh, she represents Jean Jay. Uh, a really dope individual. Actually, all these women are really dope individuals, and I say it all the time. If I don't say it once, I say it twice. If I don't say it twice, I say it thrice. You guys are amazing individuals, and I'm sitting back listening. Just to hear your voices is how great you guys are. And I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk again. Don't worry. I'll talk again. Uh, what, what are you seeing as far as like drug and alcohol use? Everything I'm reading. I mean, I'm in long-term recovery, so I'm hearing about people relapsing. I'm he hearing about a, a lot of issues. People are having accessing recovery, things like that. Um, and I'm curious, what are you seeing as far as drug and alcohol use? I mean, I know it's hard to assess from, from well, your home. Can, can, what are you I, hearing about that? Can I ask a part two to that question? Because you guys of all course. live in different neighborhoods. What does that look like in your neighborhoods? Because like for me, and I, and I shared this in our previous podcast, and I actually talked about this earlier uh, prior to you guys coming on, uh, when this pandemic happened and the, and the, the, the removal, removal of basketball courts and the, and the lack of jobs, I saw more young people you know, getting high. I saw more young people drinking. Mm -hmm. I saw more young people vaping. You know, in front of my mom's building, because, you know, I would go visit her and drop her groceries. Uh, but I would see these things when in, in the past, during the summertime, these young people had basketball tournaments, baseball tournaments, uh, SYEP, all these different things to keep them occupied. But now I see less of that. I mean, luckily, like I said earlier, we're in phase three, going into phase four. So the basketball courts are back up. So I see more young people playing sports, you know, and, and, and less of. But what do you guys, I, I did a lot of talking. What do you, what do you guys notice here? So like Nishanti, we did a survey um, at Lehman, a wellness survey, and we asked about usage prior to COVID and then like how it is now, just so we could kind of have a little bit of a comparison. And we weren't shocked. We saw an increase. Um, one thing that was a little bit surprising for us was that we saw more of an increase um, in females than we did in males, which was surprising for us. Um, so we saw an increase in like the frequency and the um, amount that they were consuming. So, you know, I'm not there in person. So, you know, I think just to mention one thing that's unique for all of us is that we have commuter campuses. And so our students are coming from all parts of the city. Some of them are from out of state. So we don't necessarily get to see their usage in person all the time. Um, and also a lot of the information that we get is through the data that we collect, you know, surveys, we do qualitative research with anecdotes and things of that nature. Um, and so from the little bit of data that I did um, gather in the last few months, we did see a little bit of an increase with alcohol. Um, I didn't really notice much of a change with marijuana usage um, on our campus because of COVID. Um, 
and in my neighborhood specifically, so I live in a neighborhood that is mostly private houses. They have um, a lot of small children here. So I never really saw, you know, a lot of um, use out in the public. Um, what I have noticed though is like an increase with like people being out in their yards because they don't have anywhere else to go. Um, but I haven't really noticed, in my neighborhood at least, an increase in like alcohol or um, drug use just because of the nature of the neighborhood where people have their own private yards so you can't necessarily see what they're doing and um, so that's kind of why for me at least. Yeah, um, just adding to Ashmini's point, in my population um, at City, we saw an increase in alcohol use, but it was a specific increase, right? They're not increasing the amount they use per session, but they're increasing the frequency during the week of which they drink. Um, and so what was an average of two to three before, and I had, you know, the privilege of having December data and data that we just pulled in December and then comparing it um, where the average was two to three days before now it was really like five to six which means they're drinking almost every day of the week um, which is concerning and again this was at the beginning of COVID we just sent out another SAT data survey to see if that's changed at all because now that everything is opening maybe um, you see a shift back to the norm, right? The regression um, to the mean. And so um, what was interesting though, was that we saw a decrease in marijuana use. And so I'm wondering if that has to do with access, right? If people yes. have yes. less access to it then they're not using it, um, which is an interesting statement, right? Um, but there's, Obviously, correlation does not equal causation, and there's a lot of other factors involved, but it has been on the forefront of my mind as maybe something that could be explored later. Oh, I think that's a really valid point. Um, I believe access is definitely involved in that because it's hard to go to your drug dealer in the middle of a quarantine <laughs> or go to the neighborhood park to cop when, you know, people are watching people. Um, you know, I... Again, I go by my own experience, which was centuries ago, but I don't think the drug world has changed all that much. And um, I know for me, this would have been a time of panic. Um, I don't know what I would have done, and I probably would have turned to alcohol uh, because I always made sure. I mean, when you have the disease of addiction, um, and I'm not saying that all the people who use are, have that disease, but many do have substance use disorder. And um, when you have that disease, you make sure you have what you need. Um, yeah. So this would have been a time of panic for me. Uh, you know, I don't know what I would have done except order from the local liquor store. <laughs> mm -hmm. so. Okay, what about the rest of you? Uh, what are you hearing or seeing, um, like um, Shavar said, in school or in your neighborhood? Yeah, so I can, I can answer a little bit to both. Um, my my data hasn't been as formal as the others who have spoke already. I did not do a, an assessment of any sorts, but I have been still doing the experts um, for the students who have violated their um, residence hall policies. Um, they got in trouble uh, or they violated in February. And for some reason, I, the reason is COVID, they got their violation letters much later. So now, and I've been... Um, speaking with them over Zoom. So I've had about 10 of them up to this point and it's been like pretty informal, but you know, still following the assessments and stuff. And I'm getting like two very different answers. It's either I'm with my parents, so I'm doing literally nothing and I'm going crazy, or I have no parental or guardianship and I'm just doing whatever I want. Um, and it's literally like one or the other. There's, I, they haven't been reporting much in between which I found interesting, um, but also I'm taking into account that they are speaking to me face-to-face -face virtually, so they might be, you know, telling a little fib here and there, but I'm getting a lot of students just saying like, no, I'm with my parents, they're very strict, and I'm not doing anything, or I'm getting, yeah, they're not much around, and I'm just kind of doing what I need to do, and so we speak about that, and we speak about their relationship to the substance that they're using. Um, and in terms of my, my like community where I live, which is in Brooklyn, Bed-Stuy, 
Um, for a few months, I was actually upstate, and then I've been kind of hunkered down here in Jersey City. So I went back because I'm going to be moving. And my neighborhood just has this really weird feel right now. And I know it's because of this, this climate that we're in. Um, but there are just so there's just groups of people on every single corner, just smoking and getting high, um, literally every single corner. Um, and it's just been very interesting. Everybody just feels so tense in my neighborhood now. Um, and I can definitely see a usage, uh, increase with the, with the community members. Um, I don't know if that's maybe it's summertime plus like we're reopening a little bit. So people are just kind of like, finally I can get out, but it's been very interesting to be back in Brooklyn and kind of just feeling the vibes that people are putting out. It's been interesting to say the least. Yeah. I mean, just all kinds of things going on and, uh, we may not have experienced before. Again, this is all new ground. I was talking to somebody at the DOE this morning saying, yeah, we're making this up as we go along uh, mm -hmm. because we, we literally are. Um, you know, you try to do things as quote unquote normal as possible, but we've never tread this, this ground before. So right. we're doing it as we go along and adapting. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's all we can do. Mm -hmm. so. Any other um, things to share about that? Um, I could... I'll share a little bit about CSI. So we haven't um, we haven't done any formal uh, data gathering on our campus just because we're not there. Um, but we are getting at least like twelve a month of um, online screenings. We use eCheckup to go to do our um, experts. So I mean that's definitely a significant decrease from what um, of, of screenings that we're used to, um, mainly because we're not in person, the dorms aren't open, so we're not, be, we're not getting any violations from, um, from the conduct office, from the dorms. Um, also our counseling center who was doing screenings, they're not able to access their system from home. So that's a big chunk of our screenings that are lost. Um, so I, I don't know um, if there's like an accurate representation of like who's actually using and who's not. Um, but I, what I could assume is just from every other campus um, talking about their increase in alcohol use. And then nationally, the data that says that there's an increase in alcohol use, um, I could assume that there would be. Um, and again, our students come from all over. They're not just on Staten Island. Um, we do have a, a bigger residential um, population than the other CUNY schools, I believe. Um, we have like a almost 500 bed uh, dorm, but they're not there. So, um, right. That's a little different. Um, what I do know is um, from, and this was shared at, from Tysa um, back in April that there were, there was not a, a reported increase in opioid use, but there was an increase in overdose deaths. Um, but it, there, there wasn't reported through 911. So it, it, we're not sure if it's because they, um, they didn't want to call 911 and go to a hospital out of fear of contracting COVID. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if, you know, the data is accurate on that either. So I think it's just like a weird, you know, time right now for a lot of people. And I think, you know, the increased stress for everyone that it could be assumed that people are drinking more or using other substances more. I know in my neighborhood, I do live in Staten Island, but like Ashmini says, it's very residential. So people are mm -hmm. in their houses or in their yards. Um, I do notice that when I do take walks with my dog or um, with the baby, I hear you know, more music. And I think people are just like having more gatherings in their yards. So um, I don't know, they could be, they could be using more. Um, and, you know, you're home. So if you have a drink during work, or, <laughs> or school or something, I guess that, you know, you could just turn your zoom camera off, and you could be doing that. So I, I, I'm interested in, in learning more about our campuses use in September when we go back. Um, I do want to survey students and, and see what they've been doing since, since quarantine. Yeah, it will be interesting to see. I mean, I'm hearing a lot about people having happy hour parties, Zoom yeah. happy hour parties mm -hmm. and, you know, virtual. I mean, that's definitely going on. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, yeah. drug and alcohol use don't get quarantined. <laughs> they exist no matter yeah. what. And um, mm -hmm. people find inventive ways, especially when you're trapped at home and you don't know what else to do. Yep. Well, speaking of being trapped at home during quarantine, we talked a lot about <laughs> prevention, right? 
and all this other this intense stuff. But what have you guys been doing to have fun to keep your mind to keep your mind right? Have you been painting, gaming, <laughs> skateboarding off your wall in your living room? Talk. I want to, we want to know. The people want to know. Eating, sleeping. <laughs> Eating, I, I gained like twenty five pounds. I'm not. Listen. <laughs> COVID fifteen. <Exactly>. Yeah. <laughs> that is the truth. Let's see. Um, I think I've been trying to cook more and just try like new recipes. Um, that's always been fun for me and relaxing. So I've been doing that more, which again goes with the COVID fifteen because once you cook it, you have to eat it. Um, right and I've just been like trying to relax earlier when COVID first started my um two of my friends and I we did like a little book club which was fun um just so that we had something fun to read and then we were able to talk about it and I've just been like um trying to moderate like you know watching tv doing fun stuff and trying to like even get out of the house for a little bit whether it's to like go visit my parents and you know even when I'm there though like we still have to social distance because that's just a safe thing to do but it's still nice to be able to see them um and even just have a chat with them in person if possible so that's that's what I've been doing it's it's such a fine balance I think like to try to keep yourself occupied and do things that are safe and fun and I don't know how so what, what was the best thing that you cooked? One of the new recipes? Yeah, I want to know this. <laughs> <laughs> so my husband actually found this recipe for these chicken cheese stuffed balls that we made. Mm. And they were really delicious. They were um, like seasoned with like um, tandoori seasoning and then stuffed with uh, mozzarella cheese. Oh. Really, it was really yummy. <laughs> I'm so getting hungry. <laughs> I, I want to share something. I've been using Zoom uh, with my family, and my mom does a cooking lesson like every Saturday with uh, my cousins and stuff like that. So it would be cool if Ashmini did a cooking lesson via Zoom <laughs> and, and did that, uh, that dish as it sounds delicious, and we could eat virtually together. <laughs> okay, I'll consider it. I mean, I will definitely consider it. I, I tried it a... twice, and the first time, you know, it yeah. came out, and we were like, this is a little bit darker than the <laughs> uh, picture that we saw, but it still tasted good. Then we tried it again, and we got the coloring right. So okay. I'll try it one more time, and right. then maybe I'll teach it. <laughs> yes, yes. It'll be fun for students, though, to, to be, yeah. you know, to do some of that stuff, too. I was being yeah. selfish. It was fun. It would be fun for me. <laughs> well, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What about the rest of you? Like, so what have you been doing to have fun and stay sane? Um, I like Ashmini really like cooking. So I've been uh, trying my hand at vegetarian meals. Um, I've, I'm really versed in like fish and chicken and, um, but I'm not as creative with vegetarian meals. So definitely trying my hand at that lately. Um, I've been working out more, which is nice because I don't have the commute and the long mm. day. And um, so I'm like, well, I can work out from, you know, I'm privileged enough to have a gym in my building. So I, I just run downstairs and and do the workout and come back up. And it was funny for the first few months of COVID, um, the gym was still open, but I was the only one that was going. So I had my own practice, um, which was nice. (laughs) And then like, as soon as like phases started opening up, I started seeing more people. Um, but we're really like, I love my, my, the, my neighbors, because if someone is in the gym, we just come back later. It's like, no, no, you got this. This is your gym. And then we'll come back later. People are leaving like hand sanitizers and wipes and things to make sure that, you know, um, we're safe, which is really thoughtful. Um, yeah. And so, um, that's really been something I'm doing. And the other thing that I've been learning is just like design elements. Um, I've been working with a marketing team and I have a brand and content manager and I also have a web designer and like they've been giving me lessons on the side of how to make logos and like posts that are within our brand and things like that. So I've been putting together a lot of just uh, posts and logos just for myself. Like I have a logo for me. (laughs) Oh, I love it. I want to see it. Yeah, I was going to ask, is this a passion project or is this a coalition project? It's both. So the logo for me is a passion project because I want to learn it. Because um, I, I, I've always been interested in design elements. Um, I've just not 
been, I've never had the opportunity to learn like I'm learning now. Um, and then I also have the coalition is, is, is building a student facing brand, right? So we have our coalition where we're building a student facing brand that's, that we hope will integrate with our coalition's goals, but also bring in more students um, because we're speaking to them, right? And so we have that as well. Um, nice. a, lot of, um, a lot of watching my roommate play video games. I don't want to. <laughs> um, and she uh, is on her Animal Crossing kick. So like I get to watch her pick flowers and, and do the island and all of that. So I have no interest in playing myself. I really just like watching her play. <laughs> That, that, hey, that's, that's whatever interesting. you need. <laughs> my, my son does that. He'll go on YouTube and watch people play. I'm like, you, can you do that? You just sit there and watch people play? Like, I'm freaking out. I'm like, why don't you play? You know, anyway. Uh, uh, Sarah, Jamie, what, what are you guys doing? Because I, I have, it's a, I think there's a theme going on. I just want to see what happens next. Go ahead, Jamie. Okay. Well, okay. Um, I have a toddler, so he keeps me really busy. Um, constantly just like doing something with him whether like we're I'm trying to entertain him going out for walks or we have a pool so I go out in the pool with him um also uh, I've been uh you know working out like Nishanti um I never like, like I didn't stop um my gym has virtual zoom classes so every morning I do that I also got a Peloton delivered in September I waited seven weeks for it so I've been pretty, pretty into that. I go on every day. <laughs> um, I think just, it's just so good for my mental health, like to do something for me and get that out of the way and then dedicate the rest of the day to work, toddler, husband, wife, pet. I have dog and cat. So I'm just, I'm always busy doing something. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Nice. Um, let's see. I definitely haven't been cooking. I hate cooking. Um, you do. <laughs> I don't love like going to the gym. <laughs> um, so, no, I have been actually hiking a lot. Um, there's a lot of hikes in upstate New York and over here in Jersey a little bit. Um, so about once a week, I'm doing at least a 10 mile hike and then some little ones nice. on the side. Um, but that's mainly for my dog's mental health and not necessarily mine because if she's happy, I'm happy and she doesn't drive me nuts. So I've just been hiking a lot. Um, and then I've been just getting into really crappy TV. So I haven't been monitoring my TV. I've been watching a bunch of it. 90 Day Fiance, if anybody want to watch. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Dude, oh my I God, it, it sucks I, me in. It's, it's painful so good. to watch. Guilty it's pleasures. So painful. Yes, it's that painful I, to watch. You know, at this point, I don't even oh, feel man. guilty that I'm watching it. It makes me feel nope. so much better about my life. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it definitely does. Like, just, I'm crushing yes. it. <laughs> and uh, so I'm just getting into really crappy TV. And because I don't usually get to do that. And it's been really nice to just yeah. mindlessly kind of, you know, you just kind of block out what's going on for that hour and just, you know, enjoy other people's misery <laughs> that they're going through. Happy TV can be therapeutic. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And then I just, I've just been going upstate a lot and hanging out with my family and, you know, that's, that's really about, maybe I will get into cooking more. I mean, I'm leaps and bounds from where I was, you know, oh my God, my yes. with cooking. You know, I know Not that. Even a test. Yes. Yeah. No. When I first met Sarah, she couldn't even boil water, and then she <laughs> progressed water. to breakfast burritos. And we, every day would bring five. Every week would bring like five breakfast burritos and freeze Just them. Freeze them and eat them in the morning. And and Ronnie would be like, "You're disgusting." <laughs> no, I didn't. I I was impressed. I'd say, "Did you make those?" And she'd be like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Whoa, she is." <laughs> has accelerated her game here. I mean, uh, but so I you your leaps and bounds. I mean. I'm doing a lot more cooking. I, you know, it took us months before we'd even bring food into the house. We still spray the boxes um, with yeah. alcohol before they come in and we Me take too. it out and put it in other containers. But um, we're, mm -hmm. I grill now so much more. Usually I would grill like once every two weeks, every week I'm grilling um, and I'm cooking a lot more, which is good and it's bad. But uh, I mean, I, I understand the crappy TV thing because <laughs> yeah. I, I'm so like, 
besieged with work. I mean, I, I work from 7.30 in the morning and, you know, I'll go through 4, 4.30 in the afternoon and keep checking back. And when I shut off, I have to have mindless stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, my relaxation, we, we, we're actually on season 15, again, of Grey's Anatomy right now. <laughs> uh, prior to that was ER. Before that was Law and Order SVU. Um, we've just been watching everything that has more than 10 seasons. <laughs> you know, and, and, but it's good, you know, it's like you start to really c get out of yourself a little bit. I should be playing the guitar and writing new music. Um, I haven't been doing that the way I said I was going to, but we, I mean, Shevar can attest to this. We have been so busy um, mm -hmm. that it's been insane, uh, but very gratifying too. So I, I see some silver linings here. Yeah. Busy to the fact that sometimes I forget to eat. That's why I eat so much after work. <laughs> that's happened. That's happened. Yeah. You know, or yeah. I forget to clock out. Like, wait a minute. Uh, I have to stop working right now. And like, like a lot of you guys said, like, when that time comes, I actually just take my laptop and put it in the drawer, hide it. So I don't even, because mm -hmm. if I open it up, I'm going to go check my email. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I really I, had to learn discipline with that because email, we have our emails on our phone and it's so tempting to like, check it and then respond right away. Yeah. So I really had to like discipline myself to not do that because that, that's not a precedent I wanted to set, especially mm -hmm. being at home. Like it's really, really easy to fall into that trap. So. Yeah. I've gotten emails at 11 at night and I was just stare at them like, you know what? I'm not answering you to tomorrow. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think you guys are doing better than I am. I responded at 11 to an email last night knowing that I didn't want to do it. I was like, no, I have to respond because what else am I doing at home? <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I won't respond. I, I always say, and please don't anybody take this personally. Um, I'm talk not talking about you guys, but anybody listening to this, I always say, we have to train them. We have to train the people we work with that we don't do that. It's, it was about boundaries. Um, my When my workday ends, it needs to end, even though I'm cheating and reading emails. Yeah. But I'm not going to respond. I just won't do it. Right. Unless it's an emergency, you know, I think mm -hmm. that's the only situation yeah. that, you know, I would obviously respond to. But usually it's not an emergency. It's just like a FYI or somebody <laughs> requesting information or something like that. So it took me a lot of uh, practice because I used to do that, Nishanti. I, if I read it at 11 p.m., I would respond. But I just, I, for my own mental health, I was like, no, you can't keep doing that. Yeah. I turned the, the ringer off um, and I, I, I have to leave my phone out of the room because I know it drives my wife crazy. And when I'm, when I go to get my phone, I'm like, Oh, I'm just looking. Um, <laughs> and then I miss half the conversation. So I, I definitely, I need to leave it in another room and go focus on, on what, where my life begins. You know, I, I always say this, we, we have important jobs. We love our work, but when work ends, we have a life that we can't replace. Mm -hmm. And That's for me, true. it's so important to make sure I put my focus into that life. Um, I mean, I love what I do, but in the long run, the life needs to outlast that. And it needs to be where, where I put my energies and my love. And um, so I need to set that boundary. When the workday is done, it needs to be done. And I needed to hear me say that. <laughs> but any other thoughts or, or things going on that you want to mention? Something you'd like people to know about you or about your work? I do want to anybody's interested in joining our coalition yes, please, there's please always do. a room yeah. for more people we're always looking to grow our partnerships and to welcome new people to the coalition yeah well, you can, and Shiva, are you going to add something no else? i was going to talk about you know the, the the effect that these guys have on our nyc pop campaign you know the the participation that these guys have whether you know, I know some of the stuff you guys can't post, but the fact that you guys are still there sharing information and sharing different tools, whether it's using the, the Google Doc and learning about how to track our analytics or even introducing us to uh, to Linktree or allowing us to use your, your paid Canva. <laughs> you know, even everything you guys are doing, even posting and reposting. If you can't post on your personal, I'm sorry, on your coalition page some of you guys have posted on your personal page which i appreciate you know it gets the word out it keeps what we're what we're doing going so i want to acknowledge you guys again like i said earlier if, I'm not, if i if i can't say it once i'm going to say it twice and i'm going to say it three times and four times you guys are so amazing i thank you guys for being here today okay and one thank final question for fun 
before <laughs> we, we end, what did you want to be when you were growing up? A race car driver. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No, I'm serious, actually. Yeah. <laughs> okay. a race car driver. What about the rest of you? What did you want to be when you were growing up? What did you most want to be? Um, I will bring it into my morbid fascination. I wanted to be a forensic pathologist. Um, in my defense, it's because I started watching like CSI at like <laughs> eight, nine. Okay. And I was like, this is what I want to do. If I could see you doing that. <laughs> yes. I wanted to be a mortician. So. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I do it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I wanted to be a pediatrician growing up. Okay. I wanted to be a singer, but I can't sing, so I'm not really sure <laughs> oh, where my head. But you do at. it anyway. <laughs> You're right. You're right. I do. I sing like no one's listening because you really should have some earplugs in when I. <laughs> Except I was the person listening for a bunch of years. <laughs> Only and when I, I was happy, it. Ronnie. Only when I was happy, which was a majority of the time, I'd say. So, <laughs> I I loved it though. It, I look forward to it every day. Well, I wanted to be a veterinarian, and a, and a famous um, musician. So I I had to give up on the veterinarian, but I haven't given up on the famous musician yet, um, because one never knows. Also, oh, you, you have a singer. I can I can harmonize. I think <laughs> maybe everybody, we'll everyone, that. everyone can help. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we're through another episode of The Solution. It's, it's gone so fast. But again, but please, thank you for joining us. And thank you to all our guests. It's always great to see you guys. Take care. And I'm going to see you again probably in a day. <laughs> or thank two, you. Or three. See ya. Bye. All right, take Thanks. it easy. Bye. Have a great day. All right, bye. Bye. That was a great episode. I always enjoy talking to them. I, I love talking to them, man. Like, I actually miss seeing them. I actually, I actually miss going to their schools. I mean, it was great. Yeah. A lot of information that they shared. You know, we got to get some more interpersonal information about them and what they wanted to be <laughs> and what they have been doing. And like hearing, I was like, wait a minute. They could have a cookbook and or a cookbook slash uh, a workout hiking book with the, the, the design by Nishanti. She could design a logo. I thought, uh, you know, it, it's. That's where I caught from all of that. I was like, wow, this is another way to, to, to get them to get, get them together to do some type of prevention work in, in that form. Yeah, I mean, you, you don't realize all the talents that people you see on a daily basis or weekly basis have in their lives. And so many talents have come out of that group. Um, you know, I've really loved working with all of them. They're doing important work at the colleges and I just wish them continued success. Uh, they're making it happen even during these difficult times. Absolutely. Um, so I guess this is it for today. I and, guess it is. And, and well, to all the viewers, the listeners, you know, thank you. And please comment, respond. Uh, we'll reply to you. Share this video. Share the audio. And thank you. Yes, please tell your friends to subscribe. And please, you subscribe because we really want to build this up. And if you're interested in becoming a guest, please contact us. The information um, will be where do we put that information? It's, it's well, on our, our social media pages. Uh-huh. It's on the social media pages. And it will even be in our bio. So please look out for that. All right. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. Stay well. And thank you for joining us on The Solution. Nothing changes if we change nothing. Bye now.